this afternoon here. <laughs> How's it going? All right. Rick T Outdoor Adventure and, uh, and Billy. So uh, we're out today. We're uh, back at base camp and uh, it's a great temperature today. It's just nice. You know that like in between where it's not too warm and it's just just nice. Do you know? And uh, yeah, so spot on. What a great day. So we're going to do a bit of caving today. We're going to do some. Uh, we're going to make a primitive knife sheath. Now. There's lots and lots of different types of primitive knife sheaths, but I think this one is the best one by far. It's a, it's a great sheath to make. And I've not seen many of them about, you know. And uh, I've made a couple over years, but I've not seen many of them about. Most sheaths are made out of two pieces. The one we're gonna make is out of one piece. So stick with this, and I'll show you how we get on with it. But it's a great little, little, uh, little sheath to make. So kit wise today, I mean obviously we've got slightly more modern tools than uh, they would have had back in more primitive times and in still some places nowadays. But uh, for me today, I've got a small axe, a hatchet, so I've got a small hatchet that's going to do the job. I've, uh, I've riled up a quick uh, mole yesterday, so a bit of lime cordage on the end. Not too big, just a nice little weight. Now this is going to be perfect for some precision battening because I'm going to need a bit of precision battening it's a lot better than just uh, getting a piece of wood for the sake of uh, half an hour's carving so I've got my mole I've got my laplander so I've got my laplander saw a little bit of lime cordage I made the other week we'll be using that at some stage uh, I've got the mori knife so this is the knife that we're going to be making the uh, the sheath for this is an existing sheath that I made the other week and uh, it does a great job. So that's your knife, your basic mori. So we'll probably do most of the carving with this as well. Uh, this is a great little sheath. This is just made out of uh, willow. A bit of pine pitch there just to give it a bit of strength and hold it together a bit better. But other than that it's just willow and a bit of fireweed cordage for a neck knife. So I mean this does a great job. It's really light. You know and I'll probably still use this a lot of the time but we're going to make a new a new sheath for this knife anyway. So other than that, I've got a bog standard old chisel, yep. Yeah. Uh, I've got a few bits and bobs in here as in drill bits and stuff. And I'm gonna we're gonna do a little bit of drilling with this old school yeah, brace. So yeah. So I mean you could if you had uh, some decent uh, augers and stuff like that they'd be better. I've just got bog standard little drill bits but they're still they're gonna do the job. All we need on top of that is a bit of wood, yep. So this is a branch about three inches, something like that, yep. So this is relatively green, I could use that. But I've got another piece which is a bit more of a harder wood, this is beech. So I might, I'm going to have a go with this one today. So I'll show you the technique and how we do it. So I've got a pencil instead of a bit of charcoal. Yeah, back in the day they used whatever they could get hold of their own, hold of, probably charcoal out of fire. So we're going to mark. I'm going to want, I mean, my sheath's not going to be thick, but I'm looking for uh, that sort of size to start with. So I'm going to want to mark my handle. It doesn't have to be perfect. But remember, I've got this bit of the blade as well, so that needs to slide in. Yep, I want my sheath to come up to around about here. Yep, so I'm going to draw it in rough.
yeah, once you've drilled it, uh, it out as best you can. Do a bit of chiselling, get the uh, get it as uh, as clean as you can inside. It's always a little bit fiddly. Obviously, the better chisel you've got, the better. This is only an old thing. It was sharp, but it's not sharp anymore. I managed to snap my first drill bit, and then when I was trying to get it out with chisel, I've dinted the end of the chisel blade, so... That's right, I'll get it sharpened after. But, <clears throat> you know, it always amazes me how they managed these jobs with primitive tools and everything. When it's hard enough, with modern tools in woods, yeah. I've made these before in workshop, it's easy enough in workshop. When you're out in woods, everything's that little bit hardy. You've not got a vice, unless you make one, you can do. But everything's that little bit harder, that bit fiddlier. Takes more time. Right, so I've got it there, something like. Now I find it a lot easier now working with squares so I can move this around. So I'm going to turn this into a square now. So that's another good reason for having that mall. Yep, yeah, if you're interested in how to make them malls, Dead easy. If you check out Mike Bailey's video from last week, he made one last week. So if you check out Mike Bailey on on uh, YouTube, and uh, you'll be able to see him making one of them walls. But dead simple, dead quick, but fantastic for camp. So I'm going to straighten these edges off now and make this into a block. Cheers, Mike. Mike made me this as well for my axe. He made it for my other axe, but uh, I use it for them both. <laughs> There we are. It's a lot easier to work with now. We can move it around a lot better. Move it around sides. So now I've got this square. I'm going to decide which is going to be my back and which is going to be the front. I'm going to use this side as my back, so I'm going to keep that flat, and I can lay it down on there. 
So this is going to be my front. This is going to be where my blade is. So I need to mark a centre line down here. So dead simple. Find your straight edge. Yeah. And we're going to mark that down the centre. So that's my centre line. That's where me. That's where me. Uh, my blade's gonna run. Nice dark line down the middle there. And then I'm gonna guesstimate. Yeah. Where my blade's gonna start. So if I put that in, my fingers on there. Put that to there. Put that in like that, get my fingers, so I know it's that deep, put it on the outside here. That's going to be my line where my blade starts. So I've got my handle up to here, and then I've got my blade from there down to here. So looking at it now, I can see that my blade is going to be approximately there. Yeah. So I know that that bit there is going to be my blade. Yeah. So all this stuff. Can come off in a minute. This is why it's a bit advantageous to leave it a little bit square and you don't get as much rocking. Got a little bit, but not as much. Right, I'm gonna take that off. Good lad, good lad. Good boy, good lad, good lad, good lad, good lad. Right, so we're getting there. 
Just needs a bit of tidying up on that end. So your knife slides in. Nice. Solid. Perfect job. So now it's just a matter of tidying that up. You can see the grooves where the blade sits, but it's thick enough for the blade to sit inside it without you're not going to cut yourself along this edge. It's all sealed in. So I can draw on it now and I can start thinning that down now. Yep. So I might as well use the uh, Mori and we'll get we'll get that all thinned down and sorted. We're getting there. What I'm doing now, I'm just going to make a groove around this, or a shallow, where I can fasten some cordage. Yeah. So it can either be a neck knife. Or whatever, or you can hang it on your belt. Like I say, amazing how they would have built these, made these with uh, primitive tools. Absolutely amazing. Uh, doable, I suppose, I suppose, but just very time consuming. But I suppose back in the day, they didn't have. Uh, TVs and all that sort of bollocks to uh, you know and books and things like that so sat around fire at night or whatever it's a time to do jobs weren't it you know make make things some nice things some arty things and yep some practical things cordage clothing tools Things to store your tools to get to look after them, etc. So yeah, it's always great doing something like this out in woods. Gives you a, an appreciation of how talented our ancestors were, and even better, you try it if you try it with some, uh, you know natural materials, try making it with flint and you know, bone tools and yeah, then you really will get an appreciation.
At least he's not going to see any sandpaper. I like me uh, traditional knife cuts. But uh, it'll see a bit of oil. We'll get a bit of oil on it. Good lad, good lad. It's a good boy. <coughs> it's a good boy. <coughs> He's been a good lad as Billy. He's waited patiently while I've been uh, messing about. Yeah, haven't you been a good lad? Hey, good lad. I've got to tie him up though, because uh, if I'm not keeping my eye on him and I'm busy doing something and he hears the blooming pheasants and deer barking and what have you. <laughs> He's gone, so he's better tied up. <laughs> so, <coughs> there we are. A wooden sheaf, one piece. Yeah, pretty easy to make, but uh, yeah, really good, really good. I like them, me, eh? I like them. And I don't know about you, but I've lost sheaves in the past. I know it seems an impossibility, doesn't it, when you usually have a sheaf on your belt, but I've managed to lose them in the past. And uh, <coughs> these are great. <coughs> and also with these Morris, over time, I mean this one, I've had it about 11 years. So over time, constantly going in and out of them plastic, uh, the plastic sheaths, they end up wearing and becoming really jangly and not secure. Whereas this, yeah, it's really secure. And if I want to really shove it, I shove it in a bit further and it's bomber. It's never going to come out that. It's rock solid. <coughs> yep. Yeah can't cut yourself because it's inside the wood so yeah great little uh, little project to do so I'm gonna get a bit of oil on that and I'll get a bit of uh, lime cordage round it here put a loop on it or or I'll make it into a neck uh, knife but yeah good bit of kit that's another one I've made it past that's uh, a bit of lime with a little bit of uh, you across the top and uh, yeah, great. Yeah, they're good. You know, and you can uh, do all sorts of designs with them if you want. But, uh, yeah, they're great little bits of kit. So, yeah, I'll be doing it if you fancy it. So, anyway, look after yourself from uh, Rick T Outdoor Adventure and Billy. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed this little vid and learned a bit of something that you might be able to tell a go out a little project. Great for when you're around camp. Yeah, if you've got it off a day to kill because it takes a bit of time. But uh, anyway, look after yourself and we'll catch you again soon. All right, all the best. See you later. Ta-ra.